We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. Uh oh, thrift diving. Hey, what's up? It's Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com, which is a do it yourself blog, YouTube channel, and podcast that helps you decorate, improve, and maintain your home with paint, power tools, and thrift stores without sacrificing your budget, the environment, or style. Welcome to episode 123 of the Thrift Diving Podcast. And today we're going to talk about some really easy things that you can do to update your bathroom. And the reason why I was inspired by this topic is because I was actually talking to a company, I'm going to be teaming up with a company probably in the next month or so. And the company is called Bathworks. Bathworks is a company that had reached out to me in 2017. And they're like, hey, we've got this shower painting kit. Do you want to try it? And at that time, in in 2017, I was doing a bathroom makeover. I had replaced the floors. I was painting. I was putting up some like board and batten. And I was doing all these things. But the last thing that I was left with was a turquoise three by three shower stall. (laughs) And I remember I had made a shower curtain. And I thought, well, I can just cover it up. I mean, I can't afford $6,000 to replace this with tile and a pretty glass door. So when they when this company had reached out to me, I said, you know what, this is actually right on time, send it to me, uh, pay me $200, send me the free kit, and then I will give it a try. What do I have to lose? If it doesn't work, I can always just replace it. You know, I, I, maybe I'll just have to come out of pocket and replace it. Let me tell you, this painting kit actually worked. <laughs> it's been six years. It's not chipped. It's not started peeling. It's been fantastic. And so they have actually started rolling out some new products and they wanted to team up with me. And so I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, collaboration that probably will be kicking off. Mm, I would say probably September-ish, maybe somewhere in that time. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a little bit, but I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about other things that you can do to make a bathroom makeover just a little bit more affordable. So I was doing a little bit of research before I pushed record (laughs) and I had found out that the average, the national average to remodel a bathroom is about just over $11,000. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that's a lot of money. I don't want to go into credit card debt. I don't want to refinance my mortgage. I don't want to do any of those things to pull out $11,000 or $5,000 to do this or $20,000 for a kitchen makeover. I mean, here at Thrift Diving, it's really all about how can we learn how to do things ourselves so that we don't have to spend as much money. Now, there are some budget things that you can do, and we're going to talk about those things today because I don't... I, I, for me personally, I don't think that you have to do an $11,000 makeover. I mean, you know, for that amount, you're probably ripping out the shower, getting new tile with a fancy door and maybe a new uh, floor. You might be getting a new vanity and all of those things are great. And I love the idea of being able to do that and just have copious amounts of money that I could afford to do those things. But when it comes to decorating my home, I'm very cheap. Now, when it comes to electronics, I will spend some money on electronics. And I know that it actually doesn't make sense because if you think about it, when you put money into renovating your home, you're going to get a lot of that back, right? When you go to sell, people love kitchens that have been updated, bathrooms that have been updated. And so you do sort of get that money back. It's a good ROI when you do those things for your home. When you're buying electronics, you totally don't get an ROI, <laughs> at least not in a traditional sense. You know, as soon as you, it's, sort, it's sort of like buying a new car, as soon as you drive it off the lot, it loses its value. And by the next year, you've already, you know, missed out on all these new features that are coming out on the new 2024s. And so it really doesn't make sense to spend money on electronics or cars. But that is my weakness. I will spend money on electronics because I know that I'm not going to replace them for probably four or five years. So I'm going to spend money to get those features that I want. And I'm okay with that. But when it comes to home decorating and decor and renovating, I don't like to pay someone else to do what I feel like I can do myself. And 
Again, if you're somebody that wants to spend that amount of money and you have that money to spend because you really want to do a complete overhaul, rip out that old stuff and just put in some new modern stuff, I get it. There's a time and place for that. But I think for many people listening to this podcast or watching my YouTube channel, reading my blog post, we don't want to spend a lot of money on those things. We may not even have a lot of money to do that. So I just wanted to cover some things that you could do in your bathroom If you're thinking about doing a bathroom makeover, this is probably the best time to do it because the holidays, it's crazy. I know you walk into the store and you see Halloween stuff already. And I get it from a marketing standpoint. I get it. There's some places that are even putting out Christmas stuff. (laughs) And that just reminds you that, okay, Christmas is kind of right around the corner. The holidays, whatever holiday you you celebrate, it's right around the corner. And you're probably going to have family over friends over and you want your bathrooms to look good. So now's a good time to jump into some of these projects. So let's just talk about some things that you could do uh, if you're wanting to do a bathroom makeover so that you don't feel like you have to have a lot of money. So the first thing is, I think it's pretty obvious, paint your vanity. Don't replace it. You know, if you want to get like a good quality vanity, you're going to spend about $300 to $2,000 or more, depending on the size, depending on the quality. But here's what I think. If your vanity is in pretty good pretty good condition, just hold on to the old one and just paint it. And I know that that's hard to do, especially if it looks outdated, right? Like in the 70s, some of these vanities have like this really ugly molding. I don't know why they felt the need to put this this trim, this molding on the front of the doors, it just looks dated. And so back in, uh, I think it was about 2015, I did, I, I redid the kids' bathroom. I put down some new tile flooring in there and they have this huge vanity. I don't know how long it is, but it's a pretty long double vanity. And it just, it, I mean, it looked 1970s. It still looks 1970s. Remember the 70s and how the 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 faucet not the faucet but the sink had that beautiful shell shape i mean where did this style come from who decided that having a shell for the shape of your your sink was attractive well i didn't have money to replace that so the kids still have a shell shaped vanity sink but for the doors i actually had removed that trim and then just painted it it was just flat and so with a little bit of paint, right? And and I think I've talked about what kind of paint to use. I won't go into that too much, but if you're new to painting furniture or painting cabinets, vanities, what I would recommend is to get a good quality furniture paint because these furniture paints, you don't have to, I mean, as long as everything's in good condition, you don't have to sand, you don't have to prime you put on two, you know, you want to make sure that it's nice and clean first. So you're going to use some vinegar and water, or you can use, you know, some other kind of cleaner or degreaser that's good and put two coats of paint on and you're done. And if you have one of those vanities like I did, where it's got some ugly trim, all you need is just a, like a hammer and maybe just something to kind of uh, pry that, that molding off and you might have to do a little bit of sanding because once they put that molding on there, they, they may have painted it. And so they probably did paint it. And so you might see some of that paint line. Sand it smooth and then just do two coats of good quality furniture paint. So if you look down in the show notes, I will leave a link to the furniture paints that I recommend. Um, you could use paint that you get from like Home Depot or Lowe's, but if you do that, you're going to have to prime it first and then use like an over-the-counter paint. It's cheaper, yeah, but you're going to have to prime, you're going to have to sand, and it could add a little bit of extra steps. So I usually just recommend get a good quality furniture paint. And they do have them at uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. You know, I remember a time when you couldn't just walk into Home Depot and get like a chalk-based paint. You couldn't. You know, you had to order that online and there was certain stockists you had to order from. It's not like that anymore. Like in the last 10 years, maybe 10 or 11 years, I mean, the amount of furniture paints available, it's accessible for everybody. And it's easy to just go to Home Depot, Lowe's and just pick them up. But I will leave a link down below for the furniture paints that I like and recommend. There's 
so many of them out there now. You really can't go wrong with a good quality paint um, that's made specifically for furniture. So try to paint as much as you can because replacing that vanity is, it's pretty expensive. And so don't feel like you have to, you know, be an expert at painting. It's going to look horrible. No. Now I will tell you when you're painting and I've been this way, don't be lazy and leave the doors on because what happens is that you will get paint all over the hinges and then it looks, it looks bad. And and that's how I used to paint. I used to just jump into a project. I didn't want to have to take the doors off. It was too much work. Have a good screwdriver. You can do an electric screwdriver. You can just do a manual screwdriver, a handheld, or get a power drill. Take the screws out, take the hardware off, put it in a baggie, and then get started. Believe me, it's much easier that way. <laughs> or if you really want to be cheap about it, well, I don't want to say cheap. If you want to be lazy about it and you want to keep the doors on, you can actually take some Vaseline if you have it. I mean, I don't know who buys Vaseline anymore, but it's great for, for painting projects. If you put some Vaseline on the hinges, when you're painting, if you do happen to slip and get paint on the hinges, when you go to wipe that off, the Vaseline, the paint will come right off. It won't stick to it. So just, you know, if you want to save time, smear on some Vaseline, paint and not have to remove all the hinges and stuff. But if you want to do it the right way, technically you probably should remove the doors and the, and the hinges before you get started. So try that out. And here's some things where you could actually make it a little bit more interesting. You could stencil the vanity, right? Like you could do a really cool stencil. I love the stencils from, gosh, I can't remember the name. I'm going to have to put it down in the show notes, but there's some really good quality stencils that you can buy. The ones that you get from Michael's and, and some of those craft stores, I don't think they're really good quality. But if you go to, oh, and I just, I should have written it down before I started recording, but I will have it in the show notes. If you get a really good quality stencil, you can reuse that thing over and over and over. Okay. And so while we're talking about stencils, here is a great idea. Now, I don't know how you feel about wallpaper. I know there are some really pretty designs out there, but I can't stand wallpaper. And I'm trying to get over that because I feel like wallpaper, it, it is so pretty, right? And now there's all these removable wallpaper options that you could wallpaper your bathroom. And you could do it yourself and it wouldn't be that difficult. The only thing is you want to make sure that you're matching the patterns, right? Now, if you're applying wallpaper and you've got to do the paste and all of that. I've never done that before. And it just looks like there's a lot that could go wrong. So if you are going to do wallpaper, use the removable wallpaper. And if you don't want to do wallpaper, because that can actually be pretty ex expensive for, you know, depending on how many rolls that you need, sometimes it can be like $30, $40 a roll. Depending on the size of your bathroom, you might need a lot of wallpaper, removable wallpaper. So what I like to do is use stencils. Now, my powder room, the half bathroom downstairs and near my family room, I did a project some time ago where I did this beautiful stencil and it just turned out so great. <laughs> this video, this tutorial on my YouTube channel had over a million views and some people loved it. Most people loved it. Some people hated it. But here's the thing to keep in mind with stencils. If you ever decide that you want to paint over that stencil, you're going to have to sand down that stencil, that stenciled wall before you paint it again. Because what happens is when you stencil a wall or anything, that paint kind of builds up around that stencil. And so if you rub your hand over it, it's going to feel textured. And if you go to paint over it, you're still going to see that stencil pattern. So just keep that in mind when you are stenciling something, especially a wall in your bathroom you will have to sand it down when you want to do another room makeover. Personally, I don't think it's a big deal. If you have a orbital sander, you just use some fine sandpaper, go over it, knock it down, and then you can just paint over it. But I'm going to leave a link down below so you can see my half bathroom. And I think you're going to love it because it looks like wallpaper, but it's just a stencil. The part, the part that was, I think, the hardest was when I got to the corners of the room. I didn't know if I should bring that stencil all the way to the corner or leave the corners bare. And I remember deciding, you know what? I'm not going to leave the corners bare because I think that's going to look weird. 
And so it was, it was a little challenging. You'll see in the video how challenging it was because I had to go in with a small, a little small paintbrush and push that stencil into the corner and it's all bunching up on me. But it looks good. It looks good. And I've had that bathroom done for probably seven, six or seven years. And I never get tired of it because it's just it, the, the wall stencil looks so beautiful. And I did a chair rail. So the bottom of it is just white. And then the top is like white with the gray stencil. It just looks so good. Oh, and also in that bathroom, you'll see that that vanity is outdated. And I did not replace it. Now, eventually, I think I do want to build a new vanity. I could go and buy one, but I kind of like the idea of building one and then getting a new vanity top and faucet. But you can see that I just used, now I did use regular wall paint, but I used a, it's, what do you call it? It's called BB Froche. I think that's how you pronounce it, which is a powder that you can add to your latex paints that you get from Home Depot or Lowe's. You can add that BB Froche inside, well, in the, the latex paint, mix it up really well and make your own DIY chalk paint. And that's what I did for this bathroom. And can you believe in all the years <laughs> that I have painted this, it has not chipped, it has not worn. So that is an option. If you didn't want to get a furniture paint, you know, from wherever that's ready made, you can get some latex paint and use some of the BB Froche and make your own DIY chalk paint, which is regular paint. And that can be kind of affordable because I think the amount that you get in the container, there's different sizes you can buy, but you then could even go just get paint samples and get a lot of paint for like, what, $10, $15, if not less, and then just make your own paint for the vanity. So you'll see in the half bathroom makeover that that's what I did, and I just mixed my own DIY paint. So there's number two. So the first one is painting your own vanity. The second one is using a stencil and creating the look of wallpaper. The only thing you're going to be really needing is time to do that because it can be tedious, as I mentioned. Another tip for tip three, you can actually refinish your tub or shower, as I mentioned, with paint. Now I'm calling it paint, but it's not regular paint. This is an epoxy paint that I, again, I had used from this company called Bathworks. Now, the only thing, if you're going to decide to move forward with quote unquote painting your tub or shower, it is smelly. It's very, very smelly. And the prep work is the most important part, right? Like you'll see from the video that I'll leave down below in the link that, you know, you have to make sure that there is absolutely no soap scum, no moisture at all. And I mean, you've got to go through that process two or three times to make sure literally every bit of moisture and soap scum has been removed. And then you can use the, the kit in order to roll it on. Now, some of the new products that they have coming out is a spray on, like a spray paint. That's literally the same product, but it's just with a spray can. So that's probably something that you'll be seeing coming from thrift diving very, very soon. <laughs> and I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to find someone who lives here in the DC metro area that has a colorful tub. So if that's you, if you have a colorful bathtub, please reach out to me, email me serene at thriftdiving.com because I'm going to be teaming up with Bathworks, and we're going to be working together. So we're, it's almost going to be like an HGTV episode. I'm going to hire a videographer. I'm going to come to your house and we are going to paint your tub, your colorful tub <laughs> from, you know, avocado green, whatever color it is. And we're going to, we're going to make it white. We're going to make it beautiful and do a bathroom makeover together. So if this is something that you want to do, you live in the DC metro area, and you have a colorful tub and you've been wanting to get this thing replaced, you haven't had the money, you didn't really know what product to use, reach out to me. Or if you have a friend or family member that lives in this area that is dealing with that, because I will come to your house and we are going to do this together. <laughs> so that's what's going to be coming up very soon. But this is something that you can do, you know, doesn't matter where you live, you can order one of these kits online. But they told me that now they're in Lowe's. So if you go to Lowe's and look for Bathworks, you can actually find the same refinishing kit that I used. 
And I'll tell you, it's been since 2017. And my shower is not peeling. It's not chipping. There was a little bit of chipping early on. But I think it was due to this metal. It was like a drain insert. And it I don't know my because my tub is old. I think the previous owners just put some metal insert down there and it, you know, it, it never really fit properly. And so I think that had scratched up the paint, the epoxy. But aside from that, I haven't had any problems with this. <laughs> I mean, it still looks good. And you you will be seeing very soon me doing a video showing you what it looks like now, now that it's been six years. And I think the amount of the kit, it probably, since they sent it to me, I don't know the cost, but I would say probably for about 100 to 150 dollars I was able to refinish this this shower shower stall of mine and it's lasted now again I could have spent six thousand dollars to replace it and of course that quote involves tile and a fancy glass door but even if I had gone to Home Depot or Lowe's and just got another three by three shower stall to replace it that's white it probably would have been about $3,000 by the time you add in the cost of the new shower and the labor. So for about $150, I was able to make this thing last for another six years. And it's so funny because, you know, every year I keep thinking, okay, this is the year that it's going to chip and peel. I'm waiting to to let people know how it's going. Because <laughs> I still have people that will comment on the video and say, how does the shower look now? Does it still look good? And I keep responding to people and telling them, yeah, it still looks good. I, I promise I'll do a video. And so that's another video that I may be doing with, bat, doing with Bathworks is to just update people and show them, hey, six years later, here's what my shower looks like. You know, it looks pretty good. So that's tip number three. That's something that you can do. And keep in mind that if you have ugly tile that's surrounding your, your tub, you can use the Bathworks on that tile as well. It's not just in the tub, but it's the, the tile as well. And I believe even if you've got anywhere in your bathroom, if you've got tile that you want to paint, you can use this Bathworks. I don't know if you could use it on the floor, but I know that you can use it on the walls and you can use it in the tub. So that is not going to cost you very much money. And that will at least extend your your shower or tub for many years until you can decide, okay, I'm ready to to get that fancier tub or that fancier uh, shower with the tile and the the pretty glass door. Because <laughs> I think eventually I would like to do that. But right now, I'm totally okay with my bathwork shower. So that's tip number three. Tip number four, you know, don't feel that you've got to go to home goods or the thrift store or some of the or even Ikea to find art for your walls. One of the things that I love to do in my bathrooms is I love to take my own photography and I like to frame it. I have always I would say ever since I was in high school, I've always loved taking pictures. I'm the person at every family gathering <laughs> that's snapping tons and tons of pictures. I'll tell you a funny story. I went to a family get together. This was probably about, gosh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. I went to a family gathering. And I think it was maybe at Christmas time. And I had my good camera. This is the camera that I, you know, take my my thrift diving pictures with and video. And I took my good camera and I'm going around snapping pictures. One of my mom's cousins who had never met me or didn't know me had asked my mom, is she, does she work at the paper? Like, does she work at the Herald Mail? <laughs> they thought I was a journalist because I was taking so many pictures. And I, it was just, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. So I'm that person who loves to take pictures and especially of flowers. I love floral photography. It just makes me happy, especially when you get one that's just really interesting. And, you know, maybe you're zoomed in on it and you're doing like a macro photography. I love it. And so when you're thinking about the art for your walls in your bathroom, think about pictures that you've taken, whether it's landscapes or, you know, I wouldn't put family photos in the bathroom. Like that's kind of weird. I don't think anybody ever does that. But think about some of the pretty pictures that you've taken, like spring photos or, you know, maybe like a winter landscape 
of like different shadows of the way that the sun was hitting the trees onto, or not the tree, yeah, the trees, but creating shadows on the snow, like anything that you've taken that's just beautiful, or even sunrises or sunsets, take that and get it printed. You can go to, I don't know if Snapfish, that's what I used years ago, but you can go to Shutterfly, any of those places and get them printed for not very much money. And then of course, you know where you have to go to get the frames, right? You got to go to the thrift store <laughs> because the thrift store, they always have tons of frames there. And if, if they're not the color that you want or the style, I mean, the style definitely go with the style you want, but you can spray paint them, just spray paint them. And you've got instant art for your walls. So that's what I have in my bathroom. I've got some, you know, pretty flowers that I took pictures of years ago. And it's, I think it's like a pink flower that I took one day at, uh, there's, okay, here in the Maryland area, there's this beautiful place. It's one of my favorite places to go to. It's called Brookside Gardens. And every spring, they just have beautiful flowers. And I go there and just try to find the prettiest ones and act like I'm a photographer. <laughs> and then I will just print it out and frame it. But you can do that as well. I do have a, I do have a link to a post called 10 Tips to Create Your Own Wall Art from Your Own Photography. So be sure to lick, lick, be sure. <laughs> I love the things that come out of my mouth. Be sure to lick, be sure to look down in the show notes <laughs> for that link because it's, um, it's a really great post. And, you know, I, I have some samples of pictures there and also things that you can do to get the best shots of your flowers and, and landscapes, but find that down below. All right. So the next tip, I think I lost count here. I think this might be tip four or five. Now, if you have a window in your bathroom, you could put up some blinds or whatever, but here's a tip that I think makes your bathrooms really cool. Make a DIY private privacy screen instead of using curtains or buying expensive blinds. And all you need is just a few pieces of wood. If you're someone like me that you, you love woodworking and you might just have some scrap boards around and some pretty, uh, pretty fabric, you can actually make your own DIY privacy screen. And, you know, just imagine that you've got a window in your bathroom, right? All you have to do is to create a little frame and you can do this without even having any power tools. All you need is just a hammer and some nails and you're just, well, you may need to cut the wood, but I won't go through all of that. I will leave a link down below for that, but you don't have to have big power tools for this. You probably want to have a stapler, right? The, you know, the Aero Fastener T50 stapler. I like using that because it's heavy duty. And you're just attaching some really beautiful fabric to a piece of wood that you framed out. You're just making a square, or whatever that shape is of your window. You can use hammer and nails and stretching that fabric over that frame and it's sitting inside of your window and it doesn't have to cover the entire window. Now there are neighbors, we have neighbors to the side of us where our bathroom window is and I didn't want to have blinds there. So by making the window privacy screen, I could put the screen at the lower part of the window so that neighbors can't see in, but I still have the whole top of the window available for the sunlight to come in. And so my bathroom gets a lot of natural sunlight, but then it still has that privacy. So I don't have to close up the curtains and close in my bathroom. This is a great way to still let some natural light in, but then have something that's personalized. And if you've got whatever color scheme going on in there, you could choose a really pretty fabric that complements the color or complements the, you know, the, uh, the new stencil that you've put on the wall. So that's a great idea too. So keep that in mind. And again, I will link down below. All right. And a couple other things too that I wanted to talk about. You know, I don't know about you, but trash cans are so disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I like the ones that have the top on them where you can just step on them and have the little flip top come open and everything is hidden inside. But the trash can that I had at the time when I was doing my bathroom makeover, 
you know, it it just started looking kind of raggedy and I wanted to update it, but it, it, I didn't want to go and buy a whole new trash can. So if you've got like some rope or you could even go get a little thing of rope from Home Depot, it's not very expensive. You can hot glue rope around your trash can and just give it a whole different look. Even if you've got some cheap baskets, if you go to the Dollar Tree or wherever and you get some cheap plastic baskets, if you get some rope, inexpensive rope, you can wrap that around and create what looks like expensive baskets, but they're really just cheap baskets from the thrift store or from the dollar store. So don't feel like you can't, you know, dress up your accessories, the ones that you already have. Don't feel that you have to go out and buy all new things. You can use some hot glue and rope and really make things look like they're just a little bit more expensive. Another thing too, with baskets, you could even use cardboard boxes. And if you do scrapbook paper and maybe some Mod mod Podge, you can create some organizational things just from shoe boxes. You know, nobody has to look inside of them. Just add the pretty paper and there's a way to store things in your bathroom that might be pretty out on little shelves without having to go out and actually purchase some of those things. All right. So here's a few other tips. I've lost count. I don't know where I am, (laughs) but uh, here's a couple things that I like. Okay, shop at, of course, we know this. shop at thrift stores and home goods for things like toilet paper holders. If here's what I find is that when I go to places like this, thrift stores and home goods, I can never always find matching things. And sometimes I find it in a finish that I don't want. Like, for example, if I'm looking for like, I don't know, silver, uh, a silver hook, bath, bathrobe hooks or something like that. And all they have is like black ones. Don't feel like you can't buy them because they're the wrong color. Use spray paint and just update them to your preferred finish. It doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, If you have an old bathroom and you've got old shower doors, this is very common in the 70s. I've got, well, I did have shower doors in both of the bathrooms, the kids' bathroom and in mine. And you can just take those down. You can remove the shower shower doors and the frame around the shower stall or around the bathroom, around the tub, and you could then just put up a shower rod and make your own curtains, or you can buy curtains. I will leave a link down below. (laughs) I've got a lot of links, right? So be sure that you're looking down there. But I have a link for how how you can make your own DIY shower curtain. I don't know about you, but when I go to some places and I I look at these shower curtains, I don't really find very many that I like. And then when you do find one that you like, it's like $40, $50 for a shower curtain. If you go to the fabric store, you can get some fabric, not very much money. And sometimes you can use coupons and stuff and you can buy your own fabric and make your own shower curtains. So I will put that link down below on how you can do that because it's it's really simple. And even if you don't know how to sew, you can use double-sided tape um, that you just iron on in order to join the fabric. And it's, it's pretty easy. So keep that in mind, you can use fabric and do that. And if you can't afford new flooring, this, this can be very expensive. New flooring can be very expensive. Just buy a lot of rugs and just hide it because no one's really going to see, and you're not going to really care too much about the existing flooring. If you've got beautiful rugs to hide it. And here's a big one you should definitely learn how to remove and install your own toilet. Installation can be very expensive. It can be one to $300 if you're doing, let's say just a one piece toilet. That's the one that it doesn't have a removable back. It's just one big toilet. By the way, if you have boys, those toilets are beautiful (laughs) because I don't know what it is about boys. Having sons, I have three sons and I don't care how old they are from when they were very young to my oldest is 17. Their aim is not that great. It's not. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say anything about my husband, (laughs) but you know what it's like, ladies, come on, men just for some reason, I don't know, their aim is not good, but the one piece toilets are are great. They're one to $300 to install. If you have a two piece that can be two to $300 to install because there's two pieces. So If you're doing a bathroom makeover and you want to replace the toilet and maybe get something that's not avocado green or, you know, one of these powder blue, 
uh, you can do this yourself. And I, I do have a link, of course, I have a video and a blog post on how to do your own toilet uh, removal and installation. It's super easy. I think I've done like three. There was only one that I had a problem with. And the problem was that I couldn't get the flange to, I think, I don't know what it was. The flange for some reason would not stay in place. And I got so frustrated. I finally just installed it however I could. And then I called my home warranty company and I was like, yeah, my toilet is leaking. And so I had somebody come and like fix that part. <laughs> but generally removing and installing your own toilet, it's very simple and you can save money doing it that way. And another really quick, easy tip is, you know, instead of going to buy costly towel bars, you now again, you can go to Home Depot, I mean, not Home Depot, but you can go to Home Goods and buy towel bars. But those things can be like 30, 40, $50 too. What I like to do is to buy inexpensive robe hooks and put those on the back of the door, or you can hang them on the wall. Those are much, those are much more um, inexpensive than buying a whole towel bar. And, you know, if it's just you and your spouse, whatever, just buy two robe hooks, put it on the back of the door, and then hang your towels there. Towel bars are great because you can at least spread your towels out. They dry faster. But I haven't really had a problem with the t the, robe the robe hooks. And most people, you know, after a couple days or whatever, sometimes after one use, people are tossing their towels in the the laundry basket anyway. So that's a great way to, you know, put your towel up on the hook and not have to spend a lot of money on towel bars. The rope hooks you can probably get for like five bucks, if not less at Home Depot or, or Lowe's. All right, guys, that's what I have for you today. I hope that you have found something useful in these tips. If you are thinking about a bathroom makeover, again, don't feel like you have to spend thousands of dollars, you know, probably for less than $500, you can have a really nice bathroom makeover and do a lot of the work yourself. And it's fun. And you'll feel proud every time you walk in, you'll know that you did that. You installed that toilet. <laughs> you painted that shower, that tub, and it didn't cost you very much money. So I want to know from you, are you thinking about a bathroom makeover? Have you done one that you're really proud of and you want to send me a picture of it? Maybe I'll share it on my Instagram or my Facebook. Please do send it my way, serene at thriftdiving.com. Come back next week. I don't know what we'll be talking about, but I'll have something great for you. Actually, I don't know if I'm going to be here next week. Remember, I'm doing a pageant. I, I Very crazy. I'm doing a beauty pageant next week in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> So there may or may not be an episode next week, but if not, you'll know why. And wish me luck. I think there's only five of us in my category, the uh, classic category. As I said, I think we should be called vintage because I like vintage, but it's the classic woman. And I am representing Miss Washington, D.C. classic woman. So I will be posting pictures and stuff on Instagram. Follow me at Thrift Ivy. And if you want to see behind the scenes of me at the age of 45, doing a beauty pageant. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious because I know nothing about pageants. So I hope I don't get up there and make a total fool of myself. But if I do, guess what? It's going to be a great story to tell you on, a ne on the next episode of Thrift Diving. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for listening. Come back again and I will see you next episode. Diving. Find it ugly, make it pretty. Power tools, alright. Saving money with the